Hi, my name is Angela and I run Angela's Reptile Rescue. I saw a lot of sick and unhealthy animals online and I thought that it would be better if they went to a responsible and well-researched home instead of being purchased by someone who didn't know exactly what they were doing. So I started taking in reptiles that I saw online that weren't in the best of shape, rehabilitating them and then finding them permanent placements and then that turned into the rescue. So first, the previous owner will contact me or I'll reach out to them and then they'll tell me a little bit more about their pet and what's going on and then they come into me, I do an evaluation, they get checked out and then they go into quarantine for 30 days and then after that I move them into this room so they can experience what a home life would be more like. So more activity, animals running around and then once I feel comfortable with them being adoption ready, I put them online and then I just wait to hear from a good owner. This is Mushu. She's one of my female bearded dragons. She was surrendered to me about seven months ago. The owner was moving and was no longer able to take care of her and could not bring her with her along. Uh, Mushu was actually in pretty good health when she came to me, but she has put on a lot of weight and now she's a very chunky dragon. Underneath of Mushu here, we have Dylan. He's one of my more recent surrenders. He was being fed a diet of large to jumbo rats almost on a weekly basis, which means he is extremely large for a male ball python. So right now he's on a diet. He's a little bit grumpy with me, but we're working on handling him, working on getting him to a better size where he's not so large. And hopefully in another month or two, he'll be adoption ready. This big girl is Hydra. She is a six-foot Colombian red-tailed boa, and she's one of the first rescues that ever came to me. She was surrendered to me when the owner had too many pets to take care of, and she needed to downsize a little bit. Hydra was also being fed too often in too large of a meal. Red-tailed boas actually have a very slow metabolism. So especially when they're older, they, you can slow down how often you're feeding them. And right now I'm working with her to become one of my other animal ambassadors for school shows as well. If you're looking to adopt and you're thinking about getting a reptile, the first thing you should do is look up all different types of reptiles. Beginner reptiles, even more advanced reptiles, and do a lot of research. I'm talking one to two months of just solid research, not only of the animal itself, but also its enclosure and husbandry needs. And then when you feel 100% comfortable, with all of the tasks involved, with how to take care of the animal, then you can reach out to a breeder or a rescue or a shelter and see if they have any of that kind of reptile ready for adoption. This excited girl down here is Fizzgig. She is also one of my first surrendered animals. She came to me in a super tiny cage. She did not have the proper lights or the proper UVB. She was kept on red calcium sand, which you can see is still stained on her toes little bit of red. Um, she's been with me for about nine months now and she is still pooping out red sand particles because of being kept on calcium sand, which cannot be digested by bearded dragons. Um, she has quite a few health problems and for that reason she's not adoption ready, but she's an absolutely amazing bearded dragon, so she likes to just stick with me for now. This is Jasper. His owner can no longer take care of him. He is a tiger salamander and he likes to sit in his little dish. He's not very exciting, but that's him. <laughs> this girl up here is the one that started it all. 
She is my leopard gecko, and she's about to shed. <laughs> uh, she's my very first reptile, my very first leopard gecko. Um, she kind of got me inspired to actually do proper research with reptiles after I learned that calcium sand was bad for them, which she was originally kept on. She wasn't being fed enough variety of insects. She wasn't being fed, or she wasn't being offered calcium or multivitamin supplements. And she was pretty small for her age, but after I took her in myself, um, of course, upgraded her husbandry, upgraded her care, got her on a proper diet, and she is a monster. <laughs> yep, you can see a big fat tail is what you want for a leopard gecko. We have Miss Tang. She is adoption ready. She is a fantastic leopard gecko. She's one of my favorites. She is so, so active. She's out all, all day even at night, even though they're nocturnal. She's out in the day, she's out at night, all the time. She's fantastic, she's a great eater. If you want an active leopard gecko, someone you can watch, this is the girl to get. Um, but yeah, she was kept in an attic for a couple months, kind of, for, the owners kind of forgot about her, but, you know, eventually they remembered, and then they were able to get her surrendered to me. Um, she was pretty thin when she first came to me, and but luckily she was eating right away from me, so she put on a lot of weight, and she's just been progressing really well, and she's been doing extremely well with handling, so she's adoption ready. She would make a great pet for younger kids who are gentle with handling. Uh, one of the biggest problems I see with reptiles that come into me is they are stunted in growth, or they're quite skinny. Um, this is because of improper diet, not enough protein, um, for example, and they haven't been fed enough, especially babies and almost any reptile, they eat so, so much. And if you don't give them enough food when they're growing up, they're going to be stunted and small and then skinny. And then up here is Clarence. So he was surrendered to Nuvas shelter. Uh, he was an incredibly, incredibly thin gecko. He was a stick when he came to me. He was not eating on his own. He had really impacted eyelid shed to where it was literally a hard mass in his eyes. Um, as a result of how he was brought up in improper care, he's blind in both eyes. He has a hard time seeing or a hard time navigating his surroundings. He has a hard time finding food on his own, so I have to hand feed him. Um, but he's put on so much size. I'll send Aldo a picture of what he looked like before, so maybe he can insert it, but he is huge. <laughs> oh, and he's also one of my ambassadors for school shows. This is Mojo. He is one of my um, I guess more not in best shape <laughs> reptiles. Uh, he came to me after he was being housed with a couple other leopard geckos in the same enclosure and as a result he wasn't getting enough food so when he came to me he was incredibly skinny. Also he wasn't his food wasn't properly dusted with calcium supplements. As a result he has MBD which is basically rubbery bones. Um, the thing with MBD is it can never be reversed, it can only be stopped. So he will always have MBD, but they can get a little bit better with walking, they get used to their injuries. You can see it in his mouth, how he has a funny little bite. <laughs> um, but the thing with him is he was not eating when he came to me, he had to be syringe fed and be given a mash of bugs. So one of the things I was working on with him especially was getting him eating on his own and feeling comfortable with chewing because he does have a soft jaw. And now that he's eating on his own, that he's walking, he's doing well with handling, and he's putting on a lot of weight, he is adoption ready. This, if you can see the body, this is a corn snake uh, that I got a while back. Um, he was surrendered to a pet store who then called me to take him in because they don't take surrendered animals. Um, he was kept in a garage for a month without any heat source, neither from above nor below, and he wasn't being fed. On top of that, he was being fed too small of a prey item, so 
He's a little bit underweight, but snakes are really hardy, especially corn snakes, so he's not too bad of shape, even though he was neglected for about a month. This is Quasimodo. He is a bearded dragon. He's older, however, we do not know his exact age. He was being moved from owner to owner, house to house, and then eventually ended up with someone who felt that she could help him a little bit more. Um, however, he was being fed baby food, even though he was fully capable of eating proper food for a bearded dragon. And he didn't have enough protein, and he did not have proper UVB growing up. And as a result, you can see that he has some MBD, which is manifested in his jaw, which results in his underbite. Uh, despite his rough past, he's an incredible dragon, and he's adoption ready right now. One of the other issues I see is improper husbandry, which leads to poor health of the animal. For example, keeping animals on calcium sand is a really bad idea, and that could lead to constipation. And your animal won't want to eat, it'll have a hard time going to the bathroom because it was kept improperly. Um, improper lights, not enough heat, improper UVB, these are all common problems I see as well that leads to poor health of the animal. Over here is Elliot, or as my dad likes to call him, Mr. Cool. He is an awesome bearded dragon. He has a little bit of muscular dystrophy in his back legs, which makes it a little bit hard for him to walk. But he's been doing really amazingly. He's responded incredibly well to proper UVB and proper husbandry setup. He's an incredible pet. He's one of my school ambassadors. He's a pig if he'll eat. <laughs> Um, and he's got beautiful colors, which makes me really love him a little bit more. Uh, one of the pieces of advice I would give to reptile breeders is to be open to answering questions from people who might have any, and to also make sure that um, prospective owners are well researched and that you feel comfortable with the sale yourself. Right, so down here we have a California king snake. He is my first and only so far California king snake that has come to me. Uh, he was actually in pretty good health when he was surrendered to me. The owner just could no longer take care of him. Um, I really like him because king snakes will eat anything you put in front of them, so you have to be careful not to overfeed them. Um, and they also rattle their tail because it's one of their biggest defense mechanisms. The other cool thing about California king snakes is that they can eat rattlesnakes even though they themselves are not venomous. Uh, if you're looking to get help for your animal, but you might want to keep it, first thing to do is make sure you're doing a lot of research. Um, joining Facebook groups or Instagram groups that talk a little bit more about the care of the animal and see maybe if you can make any changes that would better improve the life of your pet. And if you still want to surrender it, a great thing to do would be to reach out to rescues, to post on groups online and see, hey, can someone responsible take care of my pet from now on? Uh, the best way to help me and most other rescues is to support online shops if they have any, donate money or supplies if you can, and just support them sharing animals that they have when they're ready for adoption, um, commenting, giving us some attention, bringing awareness to the rescue and what we're doing so other people who might be interested in adopting can find us easily. The best way to get a hold of me would be through my Facebook or Instagram, which is Angela's Reptile Rescue, and feel free to shoot me a text or a message through one of those apps.